If you have one of these, then you know that it's loud as So what we're gonna do today is fix that. Luckily, I've already had a little peek inside, but uh, the way Blue Eddie has designed this thing, um, it's gonna be extremely easy to perform this hack. Uh, you just have to be willing to void your warranty on this thing. Uh, I'm willing to do that because even if I had to replace this, it's not cheap, it's like 120 bucks, but I don't think we're gonna have any problems at all. What are we going to replace it with? One of these. This is a uh, fan made by a company called Noctua. I don't know if I'm saying that right. This is a really popular brand for people that are into building PCs. Um, I'll put a link in the description uh, to Amazon. That's where I bought this. I think it was about 14 bucks. $12 of that was probably packaging and marketing. I've already tested this fan. It is actually super quiet. So let's get into it. First things first, let's void the warranty. You're gonna need a screwdriver. There's four screws. There's one screw under each of these rubber pads on the bottom. These peel up pretty easy. If you've got fingernails, use that. Uh, if you don't, you could use you know, a knife, but just be careful because you don't really want to damage these, although you could easily replace those with something else or just put some rubber strips right here to do the same thing. The adhesive on these things seems reasonable. I've had these off uh, like four or five times now, and I think they will still stick when I'm all done with this, but if not, you could always just put a little dab of glue on those when we put them back. All right, we've got one, two, three, four screws. We're gonna open, we're gonna take those out. You probably have a sticker on one of the sides. It's your serial number, I'm guessing, but it also kind of acts as a little tamper tag because they put mine at least right across the seam. Now flip it over, hold the bottom seam Pull it up nice and gentle. Now when you're opening it, um, the power cord on this side um, is split. It goes on the top and the bottom. So as you open it, what you're wanna, gonna want to do is probably hold that down a little bit. And then you can just split the case like this. The fan, you can see it, uh, on mine at least, it stayed up here on the top. Um, yours might actually pull out because it's just kind of pushed into the plastic molding. There's no adhesive or anything at all holding it in there. So you can kind of just pinch it and pull it out. And this is what we're looking at. This is, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce the name of the company, but it's a model FD4010BM. Uh, the 40 and the 10, this is a 40 millimeter by 40 millimeter fan and it's 10 millimeters thick. I did a search for this model number. When I finally found this, uh, it was a link to Alibaba uh, to buy these in bulk. The funny thing is, um, I tried really hard. I, what I wanted to do was find the actual specs on this fan so that I could at least replace it with something that had the same or uh, something similar in terms of the amount of air that it flows, the CFM is what I was looking for. The product, the product description that I found and the place to go buy these basically tells you everything except that spec. So um, when you look in here, the wire goes down to the Molex connector, which is right there. And they've got this uh, goop. Uh, it's not epoxy, um, but this white goop is all over the place. Uh, some of it I think is for vibration damping. Some of it is just to make sure this stuff stays exactly where it is. On mine at least, they put some of that goop right across uh, the Molex connector, uh, which is the connector that the fan uses. So what you wanna do is probably use something that's not conductive. If you follow down to where the fan actually connects, I just made a little slice right there. It's pretty soft, just enough so that I could take this and pull it out. And that's it. I told you this wasn't actually too bad. 
Now, uh, as far as putting the new fan in there, we are gonna do that. I've got it right here. But first, what I thought would be fun is to actually plug this in. I've got a 12 volt power supply, plug it in, uh, take a measurement of the noise using my phone, not scientific, and then uh, we'll do the same thing with the new fan. And I think we are going to be um, pretty happy the way this turns out. So let's do that now. I've got the fan we took out. I've got this little adapter that lets me plug it in so that we can shove it in there. I'm gonna be quiet for a second so we can just see what the room I'm in uh, is as a baseline. About 42. All right, I'm gonna put this, uh, real, yeah, I don't know, we'll do it from this line to right about here. And it's on axis too, so this is the worst possible case, but. Um, Fifty-two or fifty-three. Ten decibels doesn't sound like a lot, but um, that's actually quite a bit. Let's grab our new fan. Uh, the fan I'm using has a three-pin connector on it, and I know this is impossible to see. So this is a three-pin fan. The one that comes out of the charger is a two-pin, but that's okay because. This fan, uh, so when you spend 14 bucks on a little fan, it seems like a lot of money, but they actually give you a whole bunch of stuff in here, which is kind of nice. One of the things they give us, which we're going to use, is a three pin to two pin adapter. So that way we don't have to cut this, we don't have to solder on anything. Um, the lead here is quite a bit longer, but uh, we will deal with that. When we get to it. This fan is rated at uh, 17 decibels, I think, uh, and that's at 4700 RPM, and it's rated to flow about 5 CFM. Stay. Uh, the room's about 42 again. Turn this on, and we're measuring about 43. If you put your ear up to it, you can hear it but it is nothing like the fan that came out at all. Let's go ahead and put this fan in. All right, first things first, we need our little adapter that came with the fan. Uh, just plug that in, can only go one way. Click that in there. And then uh, we're gonna take the new connector, plug it in to the board where the old fan came out. Put it in the right way. That's something I've heard before. That is in there. Uh, I'm gonna do something kind of dangerous and I'm gonna plug it in now just to test it before I actually put it together and then find out for some reason it didn't work. Now you don't, don't go sticking your hands in this thing when you plug it in, trust me. All right, we got a green light. The fan is on, the relay clicked over. Now we're gonna unplug it and now you'll see the capacitor discharge. We'll watch the green light right there. Unplug it, green light's still on, still on, still on. You hear the, the relay and then the light turns off so we'll assume it is discharged enough. All right, now here's the fun part. Now, if you wanted to, you could trim this wire. Um, I'm not going to, but what I am going to do is just try to route it so that it's not touching anything that's attached to these um, heat sinks because I want to at least give it a chance to not melt. So I'm going to, I think I'm just gonna run the wire on. So the big capacitor is on this side. I think I'm just gonna fold it over like this, kind of tuck it in there. I think that's gonna work just fine. And then, um, so there's one difference. This fan on the corners, it came with little rubber pads. Um, that makes it so it doesn't fit perfectly in 
uh, where the old one came out because the plastic is basically the exact size for the fan. So I'm going to peel these little rubber corners off of the fan. We don't need them. Um, it's there to help reduce vibration for other applications. Um, I'm just going to do one side. This video is like way too long for what it is, but this way you see that the struggle is real. All right, so I took the pads off the top. You want to make sure that the airflow is in the correct direction, so the label is going to be facing on the same side as the cord. So this just slides in there, actually. So I proceeded to fumble around with this for a little bit. Uh, for whatever reason, the orientation of how this should go back in just wasn't intuitive to me, but here is a picture of what the final uh, assembly looked like so you can see which way I routed the wires. Ah, uh, there. Now putting this together, push this cord rubber grommet back in there. Like I said, I'm going to fold this up. That's your new home. Get in your new home. Hey, success. Look at that. Cool. That wasn't so hard, was it? <laughs> Let us put these screws back in. Um, all right. Rubber nubbies, like I said, put some um, glue in there if you think they're going to run away from you, but I think they're going to be fine. Done. All right. Moment of truth. Even though we already know the new fan is completely quiet. The fan is on and uh, yeah, this is now silent. Here's a quick before and after just to show you how much of a difference this new fan actually makes. So what about temperature? I was curious about that too, so I did a couple experiments with the old and the new fan inside the case. And I used this laser thermometer just to take some readings off the top and the bottom while it was doing its business. I didn't see all that much difference between the two fans, although I will say that the tests were not very consistent. I think the state of charge of the battery makes a big difference in how much current and therefore heat the charger produces. Anyway, if you got this far, I really appreciate you watching, and I hope you have luck with this mod. If you do decide to do it, let me know. Um, if you decide to use a different fan, let me know. And if your power brick blows up, let me know so I can put my old fan back in. Appreciate your watching. Take care.